Hi there folks. In this video we're going to be looking at a quadratic and in a couple examples from this one we're going to look at a parabola and what we're going to have to do sometimes you have to get a parabola or a quadratic into standard form. Okay and so this lesson we're quickly going to look at how to go from factored form to standard form of a quadratic. Okay so we'll start by looking at factored form here. It looks like this right here okay where s and t if you're already familiar with this stuff um, s and t uh, they will be our x-intercepts or what we call our zeros of the parabola the place where the parabola cuts through the x-axis these are called the zeros or x-intercepts some people call them roots as well but um, I think zeros is the most common term so what we're gonna do is go from this form into this form right here which is called standard form and sometimes you're asked to do that so heck let's do a quick video so if we had a question like this and it says rewrite this in standard form we would just have to remember how do you multiply two things called these are both called binomials so maybe you remember um, your teacher talking to you about the FOIL method the first the outside, the inside, and the last. It's when you multiply this all out. And feel free to watch that video that I have on how to multiply two binomials like this. Um, so for now, we're just going, going to quickly do it as though you have already seen this before. Okay? So we're going to get this thing into standard form by doing the following. We're going to multiply it all out. So x times x is x squared. Okay? Then we're going to go x times 1, which is just positive x. Then we're going to multiply negative 2 times x, which is negative 2x. And then we're going to go negative 2 times 1, which is negative 2. Put these two together because they are like terms. So we're going to end up with an equation like this. x minus 2x is negative x and minus 2. And here we have a quadratic equation. It's actually a trinomial in this case, if you want to call it that and it's a quadratic equation and it is in standard form because now it looks like this okay and sometimes we're asked to find an equation in standard form well this is it so let's do another question together this one's a little bit more complicated there's a 3 in the front and if this was a parabola we know that the 3 would make it a skinnier parabola rather than say this is the normal parabola the 3 would make it skinnier but anyway we're not really looking and focusing on that at the moment we're focusing on how do you get this into standard form so let's start by multiplying if you wanted to you could multiply x minus 1 times x minus 5 you could totally do that first in fact I'll do that this time but if you wanted to you could also go 3 times x minus 1 like 3 times x and 3 times negative 1 and then put that in brackets and then multiply by x minus 5. You would get the exact same answer. Okay? I hope that makes sense. So let's start. I'm putting the 3 in front. I'm leaving it there and I'm going to deal with the x times x right now, which is x squared. x times negative 5 is negative 5x. Negative 1 times x is negative x. And negative 1 times negative 5 is positive 5. Have to be careful because two negatives make a positive. The last step is just to get this 3 spread out amongst all of these terms here. By the way, we have two like terms here, so let's just put them together really quickly. We would have x squared, negative 5x and negative x. You have to be careful on this one. It's actually negative 6x plus 5. So just be careful on that one. A negative 5 and a negative invisible 1 will make a negative 6. So be careful on that. Now let's multiply the 3 by everything in here. Well, I guess some teachers would say you are going to expand. So 3 times x squared is 3x squared. 3 times negative 6x is negative 18x. And 3 times 5 is 15. And that is where we stop with this lesson not in terms of the whole lesson on this video, but with this question. We stop here because we now have this equation in standard form. Let's see this kind of question. Some of you will get a question from your teacher that will have a parabola, and the teacher will say, determine the equation of this parabola in standard form. Standard form. Standard. Sorry, that was a 
very bad echo. So what we're going to do is start by, the easiest way is to look at the two x-intercepts or the two zeros. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to write this parabola. It's much easier to do factored form first of all. So factored form is when we have y equals, now we don't know how skinny this parabola is right now. We don't know the value of a at the very beginning. So I'm just going to write the letter a there. We can think about that later, but for now, what we want to do is look at these two x-intercepts or these two zeros. One is at 6 and one is at negative 2. So the one at negative 2, you write the opposite right here. You go x, instead of negative 2, you write positive 2 here. And instead of a positive 6 here, you write the opposite of 6, positive 6, is negative 6. And then this becomes our equation so that if we were to graph this using a program like Desmos, you would see that we would have two x-intercepts or zeros right at negative 2 and positive 6. Okay? Now the only thing we don't really know is what is this value of a here? I mean we're almost done and that was so quick and easy. But we don't know this value of a. So what we're going to have to do is to find the value of a, we need to know some value of y and x. Here's two x's over here and here's a y. If we knew one other point along this line, <clears throat> we would be able to quickly uh, figure out what this a value is. So let's pick this spot right here. This is the vertex. This vertex is at 2 and 8. Okay, so the vertex, the vertex is at 2 and 8. We're going to put the 2's right here because they are the x value and we're going to put the 8 right over here and we'll see what we get. Okay, so 2 and 8. x is 2, y is 8. Hold that in your memory. x is 2 and y is 8. So y is 8 and x is 2. So every time we see x we're going to put a 2. I see another x here, so put another 2. We're doing this so that we can figure out this value of a right now. So we have 8 on, over here and we have a. In this bracket we have 2 plus 2 is 4 and in this bracket we have 2 minus 6 is negative 4. Multiply these two together you get negative 16. So 8 is equal to negative 16 a. I'm just writing it in this order. You could have written a times negative 16, but it would have looked a little funny. In fact, some people might think it says a minus 16, which is not true. So the last step is, how do you get a all by itself? Well, divide both sides by negative 16. So 8 divided by negative 16 would equal a, and our final answer for a would be a is, now just reduce 8 and 16. You can divide these both by 8, so you would end up with negative one-half. So a is equal to negative one-half. So our final answer for this parabola right here would be, and let's do it in a different color, we'd have y equals, the a value was negative one-half, so I write that there. And then in brackets we had x plus two and x minus six. Pretty cool, eh? Now, <laughs> I almost went on to the next question, but before we do that, remember the whole purpose of this video was to go from factored form into standard form. All we have done here so far is get this parabola in factored form. What we're going to have to do now is change this into standard form. Okay? Remember the 2 and the 6 had to do with the x-intercepts or the zeros, and the negative one-half, first of all the negative sign means the parabola is opening upside down, just like it is, and the one-half is showing us that it's opening a little bit wider than normal. Instead of one over and one down, the parabola is going one over and half down. Okay? And there's another video I have if you're confused on that, on the, how wide a parabola opens, just watch the video I have on the 135 step method. It's super quick and easy, and it will show you how to do uh, the graphing of a parabola and using this value right here, this A value. But this video, we got to keep going. We have to multiply, and I'm going to bring it over here, y equals negative one half. And I'm going to start multiplying what's inside these brackets right here. So x times x is x squared. 
x times negative 6 is negative 6x. 2 times x is just 2x. And 2 times negative 6 is negative 12. Let's put like terms together. Let's put our like terms together. Negative 6x and 2x is negative 4x minus 12. Hopefully you agree with me on that. And finally, we are at our final answer. We're going to multiply the 1 half times everything in here. So negative 1 half times x squared is negative 1 half x squared. Negative 1 half times negative 4x is going to be positive. Now be careful, a half times 4 is 2. OK? Boy, these are nice numbers because they work out nicely in this situation. Um, Negative 1 half times negative 12 will again give us a positive, and 12 times a half is half of 12, which is 6. And over here, if we were to graph this using Desmos, we would get this parabola that's up here. We would get a picture of that parabola. You can try it if you want. Just go to Desmos and type that in. Also, go to Desmos and type this in right here. This right here in factored, in a factored form, and you will get the exact same parabola. Okay, factored form and standard form will give you the same parabola. But because we were asked for the standard form, we had to do all that work down below. Are you dizzy? I apologize. Let's go to the next, maybe the last question. This is the last question. It's a word question. Instead of having a parabola drawn for us, it's just a word question. The point negative 3, negative 4 lies on the parabola, which has zeros at negative 1 and negative 5. So if we drew a little tiny picture, there are zeros at negative 1 and negative 5. And there's a point, negative 3, negative 4. Negative 3, negative 4. So right about, right about here, there's some point that is on this parabola. Determine the equation of this parabola in standard form. Fine, we can do that. It looks like, would you agree, it looks like this parabola is going to be opening upwards because the zeros are here and here, and it's supposed to cut through this point. It would be impossible for this parabola to open downwards because, look at my pencil, it would be going like this, and it never would be able to somehow curve and hit that point right here. So we know this parabola has to be positive. I don't know if we needed to think about that, but I'm just saying it out loud. OK, let's start by writing this in factored form, because that's the easiest and quickest way to write a parabola. We don't know the a value. We don't know how wide this parabola is opening right now. So I'm just writing the letter a there. But let's write down the x-intercepts, or the zeros. It's at negative 1 and negative 5. So we know that, remember, be careful. Don't put negative 1 here. Put a plus 1, OK? Negative 5. Well, don't put a negative 5 here put a positive 5 here in order for this to work. OK, the next step in order for us to put this into, or to figure out, sorry, the a value, we're going to put negative 3 where we see x, right here and here, and we're going to put negative 4 where we see the y. So negative 4 is going to be there. The a we don't know, we're going to figure that out. The negative 3 plus 1 will go right there and the negative 3 plus 5 will go right here. Let us multiply this all out. Um, sorry, we're going to add this first of all. Negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. Negative 3 plus 5 is positive 2. Let's make a little more room here. Negative 2 and positive 2 will make a negative 4a. Wow, we know that the value of a is going to be divide both sides by negative 4, and you will get a value of 1 for a. So we now know the value of a is 1. And it's positive 1. That's good, because we can see this parabola should be opening upwards. So that's a good thing, to see this positive. We are positively on the right track, people. All right, last step. We know what it's positive 1. So I'm actually not even going to write the 1 in there. It's invisible, and I'm just going to write down x plus 1, x plus 5. And at this point, people, all we have to do is multiply this out. So x squared, x times 5 is 5x, and 1 times x is 1x. So 5x 
plus 1x would give us 6x. Yes, I'm saving a step by doing that. And the last two are we're multiplying 1 times 5, you get 5. And here we have it. This is our standard form that we were being asked to do. We were being asked for standard form. We feel very good right now. And we went from factored form to standard form. Um, I have another video that shows more on how to get this A value right here in case that part was confusing for you in this video. I have a video on how to get this value. Um, I think I published that video just before this one in case you're looking in the order of things. And uh, it goes on with many questions on how to find this A value in case this particular part was interesting or confusing. I shouldn't say interesting, in case you were really bothered by it. Um, hopefully that's enough for now, and I hope you have a good day, wherever you happen to be in this great big world of ours, which is hopefully not going to be in the midst of a pandemic in the future, because this has been a tough one. Okay, take care everyone.